Aloha, thanks for tuning in to Dirty Teeth and welcome back to the channel. Check it out. The elk are just running. <laughs> How cool is that? I'm a tool geek and I especially like ones I hope I'll never use. I have two buddies that were racing the Tour Divide. Both had their rides severely hindered because of mechanicals. One of them broke a couple drive side spokes on his rear wheel. As you may know, these just happen to be the most common spokes to break. He had spare spokes, but no way of getting his cassette off to replace them. No, he didn't have a fiber fix spoke. That's another video. He did what he could to add some tension, but eventually he had to limp with a wobbly wheel many, many miles to the closest bike shop. My other friend Brian was only 45 miles from the finish line in Antelope Wells when he noticed his cassette wiggling loose and <laughs> jamming into the chainstay. Man, I wish I could sit. Oh. I don't know what the hell's going on. My, my cassette is jamming up. Right now it's jammed up. And there's a big tractor truck. It jammed up again. Put the free hub off, the cassette off the hub. Took it off with my fingers. So I'm thinking maybe I'm gonna grab some Loctite and stick it on the threads there and then put it back on the free hub to then get back on the hub. Ah, okay, take two. I got the thing, the cassette on there as tight as I can using the butt end of my Leatherman jammed into the notches where you would use a tool, a specific tool to tighten up your cassette. Not so fast, it just happened again. I'm jammed up again. So I have to put my wheel off again and see if I can get that cassette on there tighter. Kind of weird that it would just keep backing out like that. Thanks, Brian, for letting me use your footage. And if you're wondering, yes, he did finish like a boss. How about you? Have you ever had any of these issues? Have you ever jammed the chain so deep into your spokes that you had to remove the cassette to get your chain out? All of these issues could potentially be handled with this measly Stein mini cassette removal tool. Kind of seems like a no brainer for bike packing, right? How many of you have actually heard of this tool? That's actually more than I thought. Okay, well how many of you actually carry it or have tested it to see that it's all it's cracked up to be? That's what I thought. Honestly, I'd heard of it, but never thought about carrying one until recently. This tool is designed around traditional hub flanges interfacing with J-bend spokes. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention straight pull hubs like those from DT Swiss. These don't require you to remove your cassette to replace a spoke. These and others like it are great options for bikepacking. Also, some hubs allow for the driver body to be removed with the cassette still attached. This can also be a workaround. You could potentially deal with broken spokes or a jammed chain without a specialty tool, so it's worth mentioning. Lastly, I always recommend carrying a fiber fix spoke kit. It's another great temporary fix for a broken spoke without removing your cassette. And most of us are still rolling around with J-Bend spokes and don't have free hubs that just slide off. So that's where this little guy comes in. The concept of a lightweight packable mini cassette tool for bike touring has been around for decades. The most popular version was called a Hypercracker and was manufactured by Premier Engineering. It had been on the market since the 1980s. But around 18 years ago, they went out of business and left the void to fill. Other versions like the Next Best Thing tool or the NBT2 also came and went. Along comes Jimmy Boy, James Stein. He had designed some other tools already and a couple of his distributors asked him to make something to replace the Hypercracker. So he did. Like the others, Stein's original tool was based on cassette lock rings, conventional dropouts, and skewers used with steel touring bikes of the era. His early models used two plates with a reacting pin in the middle. Modern carbon bikes with huge 12-speed cassettes and through axles and all that jazz hadn't even been dreamt of yet. But Stein slowly refined his tool over the years to keep up with the times. Fast forward to the current version, which he machines out of stainless steel bar stock. It's now fully compatible with through axles. After some further R&D and extra machining, it can also now clear the 10-tooth cog on SRAM cassettes. Definitely no easy task, but it's now compatible with XD drivers. Just before filming this, Jim also reminded me that the tool is now universal. This one tool is now compatible with SRAM XD drivers, traditional Shimano style lock rings, and Campagnolo as well. The stainless steel tool retails for 35 bucks and weighs 27 grams. Jim also toyed with an aluminum version that tipped the scales at only 20 grams. He sent me a prototype to mess with, but it started bending under all of the stress. Needless to say, he's not taking it to market, but it was worth a shot. Anyway, it's about 44 millimeters in diameter and only four millimeters thick with the reacting pin removed. So it tucks away nice and easy in your bike packing kit. The reacting pin is secured with a four millimeter hex wrench. If you don't have a four millimeter hex on your multi-tool, you've got much bigger fish to fry. Jim recently got a laser engraver, so if you get one now, it'll have this classy laser etching on it. 
Pretty slick, but I still like my old one with Stein stamped on it. After some feedback, he started including a little plastic piece, which keeps your Gucci carbon frame from getting marred or damaged. This is similar to what comes with the Junior 1669 tool, which I'll pull out for comparison in a minute. All right, enough jibber jabber. I tested the tool on my two main bikepacking bikes, which are both carbon. Sunny, my glorious salsa cutthroat, and Dolphina, my Niner full squish. Both utilize SRAM cassettes with XD drivers. Installation is simple enough and it comes with some basic instructions. You slide it over the end cap and engage it with the splines of the cassette. Then you attach your wheel, which sandwiches the tool between your cassette and the dropouts. There's a couple things I learned here. Number one, I'm assuming you'll shift into your highest gear before removing your wheel. But this tool covers up the smallest cog. So it's a good idea to shift in a couple gears to get the chain out of the way before installing the wheel. Number two, it's also worth noting the spacers that come with the tool. You may need to use one or both of these depending on your frame. If there's too much slop, it can hinder the teeth of the tool from fully engaging with the splines of the cassette and this could lead to slipping under torque. Figuring out the spacers will probably take some trial and error, but it's best to do it now instead of out in the field later. Turns out I use both spacers with my Cuddy and one with my Niner. I wrote it down with a Sharpie on the baggie I keep this tool in, so there'll be no questions if I ever have to use this puppy out in the field. Once that's all sorted, make sure the wheel is installed and tightened properly. Again, the tool needs to sit flush and engage the splines evenly. Next, you'll want to spin the wheel which rotates the tool until you line up where you'll want the pin to contact the frame. Make sure the pin's not going to rest on the derailleur hanger or else you can shear it off and really mess things up. The optimal position varied between my two bikes, so it'll probably be different for yours. There's also a chance this tool won't work at all with your frame, so you've got to test ahead of time. Jim also told me people have had success flipping the wheel and using the tool on the non-drive side dropout, or they've used other workarounds for their particular bike. Just saying. Once you've got it lined up, thread in your reacting pin and really tighten that sucker up with your 4mm Allen. This is the weakest link in the system and you don't want to risk bending it. At some point, it's a good idea to shift to the middle of the cassette and move your chain up manually. This gives you a nice straight chain line and a lot of purchase for the chain when you leverage your cranks. Slowly rotate your crank forward to the point where the reacting pin is touching the frame. Basically, you want as much of the pin contacting the frame as possible or else you risk bending it. If the pin is barely reaching your frame, this tool might not be compatible with your bike. Assuming you're good up to this point, spin your wheel back slightly. This gives you some room to slide the included plastic piece between the pin and the frame to protect from damage. If you don't have the plastic, I tested using a piece of shop rag instead. It did mess up my bike's finish ever so slightly, but it's good to know it's better than nothing and I doubt I'd care if it was a true emergency. You're almost to the moment of truth. It's time to pedal forward and unthread your cassette. A quick reminder here, both my cassettes were installed properly with anti-seize and torqued to 40 newton meters per SRAM's recommendations. If your cassette is over torqued or corroded into place, you risk damaging your bike and the tool. And you might give yourself a hernia while you're at it. Ooh. You're a schmo, Alan. Next, lift your rear wheel off the ground and slowly start torquing your pedals at the same time. You'll get the most leverage with your cranks at the three and nine position. For me, it works best to face backwards where I can see the wheel and the tool to make sure it's not slipping from the splines. Although I prefer keeping the bike right side up, you can flip it upside down if you wanna get some more leverage or just try something different. You'll figure out what works best for you. Then I get the drive side pedal to three o'clock and start slowly pressing the pedal while lifting against it. It may take a few tries, but eventually it's broken free for me every time. 60% of the time, it works all the time. Boom, Anchorman. The instructions tell you to stop pedaling once it's loosened. I find with the XD driver, it's best to turn it a couple more revolutions before pulling the wheel off. Even when it's broken free, it's still not as easy to hand loosen as a traditional lock ring. There's more friction with anti-seize than grease and potentially Loctite depending on your cassette. XD drivers also have many more threads than traditional lock rings. So you've gotten this far, smile because the heavy lifting is done. Remove the reacting pin and take the wheel off the bike. Now you're gonna use the tool to unthread the rest by hand. I find that reinstalling the pin helps a lot for added leverage. If you're not wearing them already, gloves are a great idea here so you don't slice your hands up. Give yourself a high five. You officially removed your cassette with a Susan B. Anthony dollar. When it's time, just reverse these steps to reinstall your cassette. Once you've hand tightened it as much as you can, slide the wheel and the tool back on the bike. Line up the reacting pin and sandwich in the plastic piece. Lift the bike and spin the wheel backwards or counterclockwise as looking at it from the drive side. When it feels snug, it probably is, don't overdo it. Because your wheel is such a long lever, it doesn't take a ton of effort. I tested my perceived torque with a wrench afterwards and it was just under 40 newton meters. Not bad. 
While I'm at it, let's look at the Junior 1669 pocket cassette remover. It's the only commercially available competitor to the Stein tool that I could find. If you know of something else, let me know in the comments. It's designed to work in pretty much the same way as the Stein tool, but it's way cheaper. It sells for around 10 bucks. It's also lighter and smaller, weighing a mere 16 grams. It also comes with a similar plastic piece to protect your frame. It even comes with a clever built-in spoke wrench. But it's a pita to work with. You heard me right, it's a pain in the backside. There's no removable pin, so it's fiddly to get the wheel in the dropouts while keeping the tool in place. Once in place, I found there's a lot of play and it wiggles easily on the cassette. There's no spacer supplied like those on the Stein tool, so there's nothing to fill in the gap. This along with very tiny teeth kind of scares me that I'll strip my cassette splines. It also gets way less contact with my frame than the longer reacting pin supplied with the Stein tool. So I'm sorry, but I didn't even try the Junior tool. I decided to avoid potential damage to my bike or cassette because I was just too scared. I'm sure I could have made it work in an emergency, but the Stein tool is far superior in my opinion, so I'll just leave it at that. Let's recap. So does the tool work as intended? Yes. Is it for everyone? No. With the bikes I chose for testing, it performed as expected, and I'd have full confidence to use it out in the field for one-time emergency use. Even after multiple uses, the pin doesn't show any signs of bending, and there's no visible damage or wearing on the teeth. At a mere 27 grams in compact size, it's earned its way into my kit for long and remote adventures. I'd 100% consider it for races like the Tour Divide and anything similar. That said, it is a little finicky and will never take the place of traditional cassette removal tools. But it is way better than potentially getting stuck in no man's land and cutting your ride short. If you get one, I implore you to test it ahead of time and confirm its compatibility with your specific bike. You definitely want to get a feel for the tool, check out the spacers, and prove to yourself that it actually works. That's all I can think of. Thanks for hanging out to the end. If I forgot something or you have any questions, ask away in the comment section below. Is this something worthy of your bike pack and repair kit? Would you bring it on the Tour Divide? Let me know, I'm really curious. If you want more info or you want to grab one, I put some links in the description below. Regardless, I hope this video got you thinking about your repair kit. And if you found anything useful, please give us a like. I upload fresh bike packing and mountain biking content every week, so please consider subscribing to the channel and tapping the notification bell. Also, I hope you'll think about joining our Trail Magic Monday campaign of giving on Patreon. Until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward. Thanks so much for squeezing dirty teeth into your busy schedule. Please help us reach more people and ensure you receive new videos by giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward.